Howdy everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out Once Upon a Time in the West. This is going to be a really nice buck end to Sergio Leone's movies which I watched on the channel. I watched A Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More and The Good, The Bad, The Ugly and that was a few months ago and now I'm finishing it off with Once Upon a Time in the West. People were saying this is just as good if not even better than The Good, The Bad and The Ugly and that makes me really really excited because I love at least the second and third movie of that Clint Eastwood trilogy. I also have some toast here, which you'll see at the start of the reaction. I'm just really hungry. It's 8.44 in the morning, and you know what? My stomach's hungry for breakfast, so I got some toast. I'll just be eating it at the start. <laughs> so just, just a heads up if you have a phobia of toast. And before we get into this reaction, let me do the lighting. So when we turn the light, we said what color? It should be boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the color today, I think I'm gonna go like this yellow color because we're in the desert, you know, yellow, orange. I think yellow will work very, very well today. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon. I have uncut and early access reactions to my movies and TV shows that come out up to three weeks early as well as exclusive Patreon merch. Thank you so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's dive into this movie. It's a long one, so I hope you enjoy my reaction to Once Upon a Time in the West. Just like for a few dollars more, we started a train station. <laughs> this poor guy. Hey, if you want any tickets, you'll have to go around uh, to uh, the front of the... Uh, I wouldn't tell this guy anything that he doesn't want to hear. That'll be seven dollars. <laughs> you think he's gonna pay? He's like, I don't want no pink tickets. Please don't kill this guy. Henry Fonda. That's a recognizable name. Again, Sergio Leone is a master of stillness. The sound of the rocking chair as well is such a good touch. Oh, what's that? Oh, little dog. <laughs> Just use your hands, buddy. And you know Morricone, Morricone. I love this guy. Just move away from the drop. Oh my god, you're gonna shoot the fly? I dare you to pull the trigger right now. Here comes the train! He's drinking the water from his hat. He's a genius! I said for him to move, but he had an idea the whole time. Who are they looking for? They're like, ah, we got the wrong train, boys. Oh, oh my god. Give me three coffins ready. You know someone's cool if they're playing the harmonica while three people are standing at, looking at you. Looks like we're shy of one horse. <laughs> Actually, you have two extra. You brought two too many. Oh my days, I need to write westerns. He doesn't even have his hand near, near his gun. Oh. Oh, he was still shot though. The horses are like, whoa. <laughs> oh, he was shot in the shoulder. 
This guy's mustache is sublime. I wonder who this is. This might be Frank. Mm. Uh? What, everything goes silent? Oh, that's so weird. That was odd. No, that was odd. What's happening? Soon you can cut the bread in slices as big as a door if you want to. Okay, soon. Who knows? Patrick! Come on, Patrick. Look at the filth on your boots. Clean them. Come on, Patrick. And all the roses fall. That gun on the left has to be framed like that for a reason. That's <laughs> the no. 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 Oh, my days. What? A dolly shot. The music. This is a villain origin story if I've ever seen one. Who are these chumps? Whew, I'm getting chills from this music alone. That must be Frank. You can tell because he's ugly. <laughs> What are we gonna do with this one, Frank? That is Frank. Now that you've called me by name, I have to kill him. <laughs> oh! He actually killed the child! Wow, me and my homies hate Frank. Ah, oh, this must be her! Yeah, your whole family is dead. I'm sorry. She's like, they're late. It's a really nice pocket watch. Oh, I love the music right now as well. It's so lonely. Wow. Wow, what a shot. I have chills again. Oh, this is so cool. Is this just a set? Sure. That stubborn red-headed Irishman tilling sand for years way out there in the middle of nowhere. I miss this dub. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best taxi driver of all time. He is going so out of the way to bring her to her destination. That is beautiful. <laughs> This guy is a legend. I could look at these wide shots with music in the background like this forever. What's this fella doing in the middle of nowhere? Oh, it's like a little tavern or something. That's pretty cool. I love that everyone stops and stares when someone walks in. Even the horses are staring. Dan, just have to have a full tub in the back. And you're lucky only three people have used it this morning. Oh yeah, clean water. The 
This sounds like trouble. I think it is trouble. Oh God. Is it Frank and his crew? What a reveal. Oh! Oh! Again, what a reveal. It's a harmonica guy. I didn't even realize. Again, what a reveal with that guitar stroke. There's so many stare-offs in this movie and I love it. You only know how to play, or do you know how to shoot? Don't challenge him. You! Don't even move a muscle. Oh god, this guy is so dead. God. Yeah. Shoot my chains. <laughs> there we go. He helped you. Now don't kill him. This is Bandit Friends. The Bandit Boys, they like to call themselves. The gun. Give my gun back. You are uh, interested in fashion, Ms. Harmonica? This guy's like, please don't take my coat. I love my coat. Inside the dusters, there were three men. So? There were three men. For the men, there were three bullets. Oh. Nobody around these parts got the guts to wear those dusters except Cheyenne's men. Cheyenne's men don't get killed. Well, let's see about that. Well, you know music. Hmm. And you can count. All the way up to two. <laughs> it's like he starts playing the harmonica when he doesn't have an answer to something. Like so? Like so. Oh, God. I forgot where she was going. Oh, what a reveal again. Sergio Leone really knows how to frame a scene for the biggest reveal possible. I really like the music that surrounds her character. I know, I can't believe they would kill such a young kid, too. You must be a surprise today. Brett McBain and I were married a month ago. Oh. New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans. I feel like there's a lot more emotion in this movie already than the good, the bad, and the ugly. But this is as good as a signature. Cheyenne's hand. She's like, I just ran into Cheyenne. We'll make him tell us before we hang him. But it wasn't Cheyenne, it was Frank. Let's get moving. Cheyenne was in jail or arrested. We have a lot of players. There are four major groups. There's her, there's our harmonica guy, there's Frank and his cronies, there's Cheyenne and his cronies. How is it all going to converge? What's she looking for? I can't lie, those pillows look really comfortable. What a shot! Come with me!
Oh, you're not coming? Come here. Oh my god, you actually launched him. At least he's getting a shower. No, no, no I knew he was going to do this. Frank wasn't there. He sent three friends. Yeah. The way, the way you wanted it. I forgot this guy was the harmonica guy was connected to Frank. <laughs> so Frank is framing Cheyenne. The harmonica guy knows about Frank and knows about the frame job. This is interesting. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Have these two join up. It's too dark outside. Where'd he go? I love how much Sergio Leone can get away with silence on screen, you know what I mean? There's probably been like 20 lines of dialogue in this movie. And we're an hour in. Hello there. Oh, not who I thought. It's Cheyenne. I thought it was going to be the flippin' harmonica guy. Did you make coffee? No. If you had called, I would have. <laughs> they wanted to hang me. The big black crows. <laughs> Idiots. Do they know each other? I'll kill anything. Never a kid. Be like killing a pre- Yeah, but never a kid. Okay. At least he has morals. See, I ain't the mean bastard. I love this framing as well. Somebody had a mind to kill me. Fires me up. Oh, he's talking about her right now, too. Ain't a nice thing to see. He's looking at that knife. Sleep for a lady. How does he just know? How does he just know? I guess because he thinks that she thinks he killed her family. What I don't understand is the why. Why they would frame you? Or why they would kill these people? But I see you looked a lot for the why. Yeah, that's what she was looking for, okay. You know anything about a man going around playing a harmonica? He was actually here last night, briefly. If you want to, you can lay me over the table and amuse yourself. And even call in your men. When you're finished, all I'll need will be a tub of boiling water. And I'll be exactly what I was before. She is so cool. You make good coffee at least? Not bad. Not bad coffee at all. I only told you to scare them. People scare better when- So Frank works for someone else. Traveled a long way, just the same. And fast. Even tuberculosis of the bones. Oh, he has tuberculosis. Otherwise, you ain't changed any. I'd say you've changed, Frank. A lot. You used to take care of certain things personally. And now you don't at all. It's because now I don't want to leave you alone too much. I like your whiskey. Like a friend. Or like a partner. Mm. Okay, partner. It's almost like holding a gun. Yeah, I bet it feels so powerful. This McBain business is giving me ideas. Oh, what ideas? Oh, that close-up was so intimidating. Why? Because there are many things you'll never understand. Don't even try. And the only one that can stop that is this. Yeah, money, baby. Those are big dollar bills. But they can still shoot holes big enough for our little problems. Pretty soon the widow McBain won't be a problem no more. Okay. 
Well, I don't know why I'm saying okay so excitedly. I'm just excited to see Frank in action more. I don't want her to die. Still, I swear he'd left money around someplace. You think? Mrs. McBain goes back to civilization. Minus her husband. And plus a great future. You think it's money or you think it's something else? Like something to do with the railroad? The last man who told me that is buried out there. Oh my days. Whoever my father was for an hour or for a month, he must have been a happy man. I actually quite liked the chemistry between those two. Here's the harmonica guy again. She's like, what are you doing up there? Cheyenne's right once you've killed four. It's easy to kill it's five. It's easy to make it five. Yeah. What are you doing, harmonica man? Why? Give me some water. Why did you do that? Oh, this is a plan. He had a plan of some sort. Is he trying to lure these guys over here? Okay, and the horses are coming. Well, not just the horses. The guys on the horses, too, are coming. Well, you'll hear a strange sound drop to the ground. A sound? When you hear a strange one. Good shot! Oh wow. He's like, he's the real deal. He not only plays, he can shoot too. You guys need to team up and fight Frank. Yes. See Frank. Oh. And tell him I know everything. Oh. Tell Frank I want to negotiate with him. Personally. Dude, she is so cool. Is this that rich guy's train? I'll be here right away and tell you about it. You never thought it wasn't a trick? Sure, but you know that I'm mighty careful, Frank. Well, are you? And that's the first thing I learned working for you. To listen and see. Oh my god, Frank's good. How can you trust a man that wears both a belt and suspenders? What a quote. Even trust his own pants. You can't even trust his own pants. That is beautiful. <laughs> Wait, there's no way. He's on the train, though. Look at him just riding on the train. This is kind of a cool stunt. Jeez. Frankly, your plan was bad. <laughs> you should say that. Who was that blurry figure? Wait, Frank. I did. So, no. You did lead him here. I can explain. I know that he. You're throwing him off. Oh, Frank. That was a good kick, though. Oh my God! What an absolute legend. Oh, he shot the suspenders and the belt. Just your pants, punk. What do you want? Who are you? Dave Jenkins. Dave Jenkins. Bro, Frank has blue, blue eyes. Called her Benson. What's your name? Benson's dead, too. Oh, wait. Who are you? Who are you, Frank? The woman. The guy was just naming dead people. Oh, wow, this is so cool. Uh, that's a cool shot, though. Ah, now this is amazing. These two teaming up, peak, peak team. Oh. 
Oh my days. What a stunt. Why the guy turn his chair, the rich guy? Is it like bulletproof at the back? No, this is fake. This is a fake boot. That was amazing! Oh my god! What did I say? Now he has a hole in his boot though. That's so sad. Sorry guys, just need to use the bathroom. Hey, Mr. Choo Choo. Mr. Choo Choo. There's another bastard. And he's getting further away every minute. Yeah, Frank. Foundation pylons, 10 kegs of nails, 20 barrels of tar, and all these tools. Maybe he- Jeez, what was her husband doing? He could have built at least eight of them. Is he building a railroad or something? McBain also ordered this. Said it was important. He's gonna say station. Yes, exactly the little miniature that she played with earlier. I said Prince Station. He was gonna build his own little town, you think? Oh, there it is. Is this what you ordered, madame? Oh, it's Frank. I hate Frank. You can't even stand on your own feet by yourself. Frank, man. Is that sufficient to make you feel strong? I could squash you like a wormy apple. Jeez, look at that shot. Look how menacing he looks towering above him. Oh, Horton, don't worry about the land. If you feel like paying for it, you can pay. Of course, it make any difference. It's kind of a cool little area to live, don't you think? Over here, too! Only it says post office! And this one says corral! Yeah, was he trying to make his own little town? And all around it a town. We're at McBain's town. Really? Through Flagstone would continue on west. So I looked over all this country out here. And let's build a town. Them steam engines can't roll without water. And the only water for 50 miles west of Flagstone is right here. Interesting. You don't sell the dream of a lifetime. Brett McBain wanted his station. He wanted the town. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hey, more than that. Hundred and one thousands of dollars. Yeah, I always thought it'd be easy to make a deal with a smart... All you gotta do is... What are they doing, by the way? Why are they sticking and stringing? The hell are you standing around for? Are they planning? Is like gonna be a building foundation? Build a station! Yes. Yeah, build a station, let's go! I would join in, tell me where to be. Oh, it's even worse. Oh, and the bed is hanging? Yeah. I think yeah. You like being alive? Hmm? No, she's like... I think she's playing the long game. She's smart. Even if they're the hands of the man who killed your husband. She's like, yes, I love murderers. Is there anything in the world you wouldn't do to save your skin? No. Yeah, I bet he did. He's just the type to marry a whore. Why you gotta have McBain slender right now? And maybe make a perfect wife. Interesting. Side over the sale by auction of all property belonging to Mrs. Jill McBain. Sale by auction? I declare the auction open. Now who's going to make the first bid? I will. One dollar fifty. All right, now who's going to make the first bid? Two hundred dollars. Okay, there we go. Five stock alone is worth twice that much. Well, okay. $200 going once. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't even take 200 as a deposit. 
No, it's an auction. Go. Going once, going twice, sold. This is so interesting. What is it? Dealer takes three. What is it? What's about to happen? I'll deal. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of money on the table. This is so tense. I don't know what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen, but I'm tensed up right now. The silence, the sound of the train in the background, like this monotonous sound. Stressful, man. One, two, three, four, five hundred dollars. You can buy a mansion with five hundred dollars. As long as you use your head, you're never. Okay, okay, okay. Five hundred dollars. Do I hear any other bids? No. So... This is the lamest auction of all time. Five hundred dollars twice. Sold for five hundred. $500. Five thousand dollars. Oh, why do you wait so long? Why do you have to be so dramatic about it? You said five thousand dollars? Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, he's worth five thousand dollars as a bounty. Okay, there's always so much happening, you know what I mean? Like, there's always so many characters that are involved in something. I'd like two tickets, please. I don't look like a poor defenseless widow. Oh, no, you don't. And you're a remarkable man. But you have something on your mind. Yeah, harmonica playing. He's trying to figure out his next song. Oh, what a shot. I love that he's in white and this guy's in all black. Oh, Frank in all black, harmonica in all white. Jim Cooper. Chuck Youngblood. He's just naming dead people. Five thousand and one plus one. Oh my god, he's using the plus one tactic. Okay, this shot, this shot, man. I want to see who this is. Which deal, Frank? We have more than one, you and me. Oh. Lump them together into one bundle, settle all of them. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. How much? One dollar. Okay, oh, he uses the dollar on the table. Yeah, he's like, where are my men? Oh my god, you're disrupting her bath. She said she was having one. That looks like an epic, epic bath though. Again, the silence. Things are just playing out, but there's no words. Oh, wow. Oh, that's epic. Don't take another step, Frank. This must be the guy that the rich guy bought out. Strange sound. Right now. Oh! He just helped Frank. He just saved Frank. It's like, howdy, we're on the same team now. I love how allegiance has changed like this. Gonna help 
Time thing. Time sure flies. It's already past 12. Oh my god. <laughs> that was such a cool way to help him. And they tried to kill him. They must have found somebody who pays better. And yeah, the rich guy. You get dressed. It's time to go home. Ooh, beautiful. That's a lot of dead bodies. I like this dolly shot again. Wow, this is a sick shot, guys. guy died and crumpled over into a ball. Oh, it's the rich guy. The piano. He uncocked his gun. She's gonna let him suffer? Hey, the water. He wanted to see water. He wanted to see the Pacific Ocean. That's a very poetic death for him. Oh, wow. Look at the scale of this shot. Oh, hello there. Did you make coffee? This time I did. Hey, this time she did. Cheyenne loves his coffee, I guess. He's whittling on a piece of wood. On a piece of wood? Something's gonna happen. Something always happens. And at the end of the movie, right? We have to be close, so something has to happen. All three of the boys are here. Whittling over. Wouldn't have bothered him knowing you were around somewhere alive. So you found out you're not a businessman after all. Just a man. Just a man. Not the money, not the woman. I came here to see you. Because I know that now you'll tell me what you're after. Okay, Frank. I like your plan. We're going to have a sick duel. So I can watch the railroad move up while I shave. <laughs> Just make believe it's nothing. I like that the music stopped for that line. Oh, the riff. Woohoo, this is pretty cool. Oh, this is a cool wide. Oh, this is sick. Oh, and he dropped it on beat. Ooh. Ooh, I love the harmonica in it. Okay, okay, let's go! Hands are ready. He's not even taking off his coat. The little harmonica. Who is this lad? Oh, that's Frank. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Keep your loving brother happy. What? No way. Oh 
Oh my god, he's gonna hang his brother. If he moves, the brother dies. Oh my god. Oh wow, what a shot. The music right now as well. Oh god. Oh. Did you hit him? Did you hit him? Yes, I see the bullet hole. I see the bullet hole. I love how clean his silhouette is. Harmonica, there we go. Frank's like, I still don't know who you are. I've done this to a hundred people. Oh, it's even bent like it was before. Love the sound design, it's his breath on the harmonica. And then it just abruptly stops. That was sick. Harmonica's the right man. And neither is he. Oh no. The footsteps. The smile. What a good reveal. Music is so beautiful again. Wow, he really just picked up the stuff and said adios. Just like Cheyenne said. Gonna be a beautiful time, sweet water. Yeah, it will be. Someday. Someday. Oh, I got chills. Oh, that was good. Yeah. I gotta go too. Oh man. Ah, it's so sad I had a voice crack. He's doing exactly what he just said, like 10 minutes ago. Are they gonna stick together though, or are they gonna go their separate ways? Why'd you throw your hat on the ground? What is it, Cheyenne? Sorry, Harmonica. I gotta stay here. Yes! Thank you! Oh! How was he shot? Was he shot by Frank's gun? I ran into Mr. Choo Choo. Oh. <laughs> Go away. Go away, I don't want you to see me die. No, no, no. The music stopping and then starting again, just like finishing the very last note when he hits the floor dead. That was really well done. Wow, that's a grand shot too. Oh, the town, the station sign is up. Music again, beautiful. Guess she has the water, yeah? Once upon a time in the West. And that's the movie. And that is the movie. That was really enjoyable. I liked it a lot. I. I mean, at the start, I was like sad that Clint Eastwood wasn't in this movie. I knew he wasn't going in. But you know what? Everyone else was amazing. So who cares that Clint Eastwood isn't in this movie? <laughs> but 
I loved the characters, the music was amazing. Yeah, and some of the shots were absolutely incredible. And that was my reaction to Once Upon a Time in the West, the 1968, 1968? Yeah, I think so. On Amazon Prime, it's in 1969, but I'm pretty sure this movie came out in 1968. Western drama starring Charles Bronson and Henry Fonda. Henry Fonda is a very recognizable name to me, but I've never seen a movie that he's in, but it, I'm pretty sure that he was some big Western actor maybe in 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 the past or something like that but never seen one of his movies before but Henry Fonda is a name that I am very familiar with maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm thinking of someone completely different but I feel like I've heard his name before this movie was really really good I enjoyed it so much I don't think I enjoyed it as much as the good the bad and the ugly well actually I'm thinking about it now and I think I liked the first half of this movie more than the first half of the good the bad and the ugly but i liked the second half of the good the bad and the ugly more than the second half of this one so i think if you kind of level it out i i like the good and the bad and the ugly a little bit more um and there were definitely moments from other movies or other sergio leone movies that i've seen such as a fist a few dollars for a few dollars more where like i like the final duel of that one the most out of all three or including this one all four of the movies so there's bits and pieces of different movies that i like more than the others but i'm not saying that this one is bad this one is a really good movie and i think second or maybe third favorite because i really like a for a few dollars more as well but even then it's still like an amazing movie like four stars four out of five stars not four out of ten that would be horrible but four out of five stars or something like that because this movie had some amazing shots some amazing visuals some amazing amazing camera work the score was incredible just like i expected the last three scores were incredible and i listened to them still even months after watching the movie and this score i'm going to download now once i once i've finished recording this the score i'm going to download and listen to because it was absolutely magical I thought the duels were amazing. I thought just the shot compositions were amazing. And yeah, let's just kind of talk about some of the stuff that I liked, starting with the music. I thought the music was, I mean, I just said it, absolutely incredible. It was so moving at times. I think this was definitely the most emotional the score has ever gotten in these Sergio Leone Western movies. I don't think the score reached the heights and the epicness of the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't think any music is going to be able to reach the heights of the ecstasy of gold because that song is just absolutely legendary and probably one of if not the best piece of music for a movie that has ever been put to film because it, it's so mind-boggling how good that score is and also just like the rest of the score like the whole fight at the end in the graveyard the duel at the end of the good the bad and ugly is an incredible score as well but i thought that the score in terms of epicness was really really good as well in once upon a time in the west the final piece of music like i didn't think there was ever like a super epic piece of score until the final duel at the end there was a really beautiful music and stuff like that there was kind of like a little bit funny music and stuff like that but I never really found anything to be incredibly epic and grand like like the good the bad and the ugly or for a few dollars more which happened at the end as well but in once upon a time in the west that music that grandness from the music came at the very end of the movie when we had the duel between frank and harmonica and the music was playing and i loved the integration of those guitar riffs and like music that we associate with frank mixed with the harmonica riffs and stuff that we associate with harmonica and i loved the combination of the two and it just made for this really epic soundtrack that was so much fun it was so tense at times and i loved how loud it was it was as we're getting that final background between harmonica and frank and how harmonica knows frank and why harmonica is after frank we're getting all that the music is loud it's bombastic it's going back and forth we get that harmonica riffs we get those guitar riffs it's so epic and then it just cuts to this dead silence and it's so intense and you're just sitting at the edge of your seat and you're just waiting for something to happen you're just sitting there waiting and leaning into the screen and you know something's gonna happen and it's silent and it's silent and it's silent and it's silent and it was so well done Sergio Leone and 
Enino Morricane. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that composer's name, but both of them, plus whoever mixing the sound and stuff, they all know how to incorporate sound in ways that's super effective, when to have sound, when not to have sound. It's awesome. I thought Jill's theme was definitely the most emotional that this Western quadrilogy, if you will, has gotten. Her theme was so beautiful and it was poignant and I'm definitely going to probably be listening to that theme the most because it was the theme that we first got with her when she gets off the train and her family isn't there and she thinks that they just forgot about her or something and then we get that beautiful shot of like her walking to the station and this silent we just hear her talking she's directed out of the station she walks out of the station and then the camera pans up and the music just swells into like this beautiful crescendo and the music and this the camera just pans up and we see the the town and stuff like that that was such a good piece of music and then again the music kicks in when she sees her family dead at the house and stuff like that and the music keeps kicking up whenever Jill is in the shot or whenever Jill is in the scene and it was probably my favorite piece of music in this movie and one of my favorite pieces of music in the four Sergio Leone westerns that I have seen and again just like I said about the other three movies that I watched on this channel a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more and the good the bad and the ugly the shot composition and the shot choices that Sergio Leone uses are absolutely phenomenal and they just show that he is a master of directing not even just directing westerns but directing and storytelling as well the way that he frames shots and the way i mean you can also attribute this to the cinematographer and stuff like this the director of photography but sergio leone definitely has a big hand and a masterful hand in all of this as well but the way that he frames shots and the way that he uses the camera to reveal certain things in a scene that even though you know are going to happen he reveals it in ways that are super in impactful and very effective, way more effective than just showing things. For example, the dead bodies that are lined up at the house when Jill goes to the house for the first time and sees her family dead. We know she's going to see her family dead. We see the people mourning. We know what happened. We saw her family die earlier in the movie. So we know these dead bodies are going to happen. But Sergio Leone frames it in a way that still makes it shocking to us as if we haven't seen it before because he hides the bodies behind this mass of people. And then the camera kind of goes across the people like this and we slowly get revealed the bodies and it starts with the dad and it goes all the way to the kid and we're like oh my god you're right half an hour ago person called Frank just shot all of these people including this like eight-year-old child and stuff like that and it's just like this really impactful reveal and he could have just like had her walking and then all of a sudden just shown the dead bodies and then shown her and it still would have been like emotional because it's a, pr a pretty dark scene overall but the way that he just reveals stuff like that just reveals the bodies reveals other things reveals faces reveals characters you know reveals outcomes of events that are going to happen it just makes everything feel like it has a lot more weight to it than if he just showed it and I think that's one of the best things that this movie does. As well the wides and the landscape shots are absolutely incredible. The wides of the duel seeing our harmonica here and Frank here and one in white and one in black and they're just the wide and you're just the desert and the silence and the wind and stuff like that absolutely beautiful. The horse riding scene where Jill is on that taxi guy I don't know what you want to call him the carriage guy and they're just going through the desert to get to her house and there's just those big stone pillar things in the background just so beautiful just this open wide landscape amazing to look at and yeah just the way that Sergio Leone is able to use silence and use the way the characters are looking and their body language and shot composition to tell a story I mean if you look at the script for this movie it's probably not that long compared to other almost three hour movies because there's not that much dialogue in it relative to the runtime but this movie is taken up a lot by silence, but characters looking into the distance, looking at each other, you know, looking at things like objects and stuff like that. Really, you can see their mind churning with ideas. And some people may say that's boring, it's bad storytelling and stuff like that. But when done right, I th which I think this movie did, it can be very, very effective in really showing and not telling the audience what is happening, what a character is thinking. There are a lot of times where plot points wouldn't really be told to us and we have to figure them out through characters' actions and through characters' like looks and like visuals of how they are feeling and stuff like that alone and I thought that was really cool. Okay yeah I think that is going to be the end of my review to Once Upon a Time in the West. I could review this movie for longer but 
I feel like I'm going to end it there because it's been three <laughs> three hours and my body is tired. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I really loved the characters in this movie, Frank, Harmonica, Cheyenne. Cheyenne was amazing. I'm so sad he died. But yeah, let me know if there's any other movies like Once Upon a Time in the West. Let me know if there's other Sergio Leone movies. Let me know if Henry Fonda is actually an actor that I should look out for. I don't know. Or let me know of any movies that you just want me to watch in general in the comments down below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.